Advanced Encryption Standard, Wikipedia Article Audio Attacks have been published that are computationally faster than a full brute force attack, though none as of 2013 are computationally feasible. The Advanced Encryption Standard, also known by its original name Dale, is a specification for the encryption of electronic data established by the U.S. National Institute of Standards and Technology in 2001. Definitive Standards Description of the Cipher EASE is a subset of the Dale cipher developed by two Belgian cryptographers, Vincent Ridgman and Joan Damon, who submitted a proposal to NIST during the EASE selection process. Dale is a family of ciphers with different key and block sizes. For EASE, NIST selected three members of the Dale family, each with a block size of 128 bits, but three different key lengths, 128, 192 and 256 bits. EASE has been adopted by the U.S. government and is now used worldwide. It supersedes the data encryption standard, which was published in 1977. The algorithm described by EASE is a symmetric key algorithm, meaning the same key is used for both encrypting and decrypting the data. In the United States, EASE was announced by the NIST as U.S. FIPS Pub 197 on November 26, 2001. This announcement followed a five-year standardization process in which 15 competing designs were presented and evaluated, before the Dale cipher was selected as the most suitable. EASE became effective as a federal government standard on May 26, 2002, after approval by the Secretary of Commerce. EASE is included in the ISO-IEC 18033-3 standard. EASE is available in many different encryption packages, and is the first publicly accessible cipher approved by the National Security Agency for top secret information when used in an NSA-approved cryptographic module. High-Level Description of the Algorithm The Advanced Encryption Standard is defined in each of EASE is based on a design principle known as a substitution a euro permutation network, a combination of both substitution and permutation, and is fast in both software and hardware. Unlike its predecessor day, EASE does not use a Feistel network. EASE is a variant of Dale, which has a fixed block size of 128 bits, and a key size of 128, 192, or 256 bits. By contrast, the Dale specification per SE is specified with block and key sizes that may be any multiple of 32 bits with a minimum of 128 and a maximum of 256 bits. The Sub-Bytes Step EASE operates on a 4A4 column major order matrix of bytes, termed the state, although some versions of Dale have a larger block size and have additional columns in the state. Most EASE calculations are done in a particular finite field. For instance, if there are 16 bytes, b, 0, b, 1, b, 15, b, b, these bytes are represented as this matrix. The key size used for an E cipher specifies the number of repetitions of transformation rounds that convert the input, called the plaintext, into the final output, called the ciphertext. The number of cycles of repetition are as follows. The shift rows step. Each round consists of several processing steps, each containing four similar but different stages, including one that depends on the encryption key itself. 
A set of reverse rounds are applied to transform ciphertext back into the original plaintext using the same encryption key. The mix columns step. In the sub-bytes step, each byte, A, I, J, in the state matrix is replaced with a sub-byte S, A, I, J, using an 8-bit substitution box, the Rillendale S box. This operation provides the nonlinearity in the cipher. The S box used is derived from the multiplicative inverse over GF, known to have good nonlinearity properties. To avoid attacks based on simple algebraic properties, the S box is constructed by combining the inverse function with an invertible affine transformation. The S box is also chosen to avoid any fixed points i.e. s, a, i, j, a per thousand, a, i, j, and also any opposite fixed points, i.e. s, a, i, j, a with circumflex, a, i, j, a per thousand, ff, 16, backslash nig. While performing the decryption, the inv subbyte step is used which requires first taking the inverse of the affine transformation and then finding the multiplicative inverse. The add round key step. The shift rows step operates on the rows of the state, it cyclically shifts the bytes in each row by a certain offset. For ease, the first row is left unchanged. Each byte of the second row is shifted one to the left. Similarly, the third and fourth rows are shifted by offsets of 2 and 3 respectively. For blocks of sizes 128 bits and 192 bits, the shifting pattern is the same. Row, N, is shifted left circular by, N, A, 1, bytes. In this way, each column of the output state of the shift row step is composed of bytes from each column of the input state. For a 256-bit block, the first row is unchanged and the shifting for the second, third, and fourth row is one byte, three bytes and four bytes respectively a euro. This change only applies for the Rillendale cipher when used with a 256-bit block as ease does not use 256-bit blocks. The importance of this step is to avoid the columns being encrypted independently, in which case ease degenerates into four independent block ciphers. In the mix columns step, the four bytes of each column of the state are combined using an invertible linear transformation. The mix columns function takes four bytes as input and outputs four bytes, where each input byte affects all four output bytes. Together with shift rows, mix columns provides diffusion in the cipher. Optimization of the cipher During this operation, each column is transformed using a fixed matrix. Matrix multiplication is composed of multiplication and addition of the entries. Entries are 8-bit bytes treated as coefficients of polynomial of order, x, 7. Addition is simply xor. Multiplication is modulo irreducible polynomial, x, 8, plus, x, 4, plus, x, 3, plus, x, plus, 1, plus x plus x plus x plus 1. If processed bit by bit then after shifting a conditional XOR with 1B16 should be performed if the shifted value is larger than FF16. These are special cases of the usual multiplication in GF, A, 2, 8. In more general sense, each column is treated as a polynomial over GF, A, 2, 8 and is then multiplied modulo, z, 4, plus, 1, plus 1, with a fixed polynomial, c, z, equals, 
zero three sixteen a z three plus z two plus z plus zero two sixteen backslash dot z plus z plus z plus the coefficients are displayed in their hexadecimal equivalent of the binary representation of bit polynomials from gf a 2 x the mix column step can also be viewed as a multiplication by the shown particular mds matrix in the finite field gf a 2 8 this process is described further in the article Riemann-Dale mix columns. In the add round key step, the sub key is combined with the state. For each round, a sub key is derived from the main key using Riemann-Dale's key schedule. Each sub key is the same size as the state. The sub key is added by combining each byte of the state with the corresponding byte of the sub key using bitwise XOR. On systems with 32-bit or larger words, it is possible to speed up execution of this cipher by combining the sub-bytes and shift rows steps with the mix column step by transforming them into a sequence of table lookups. This requires 4256 entry 32-bit tables. A round can then be performed with 16 table lookup operations and 12 32-bit exclusive OR operations followed by 432-bit exclusive OR operations in the add round key step. Alternatively, the table lookup operation can be performed with a single 256 entry 32-bit table followed by circular rotation operations. Security Using a byte-oriented approach, it is possible to combine the sub-bytes, shift rows, and mix column steps into a single round operation. Known Attacks Until May 2009, the only successful published attacks against the Foley's were side-channel attacks on some specific implementations. The National Security Agency reviewed all the EASE finalists, including Rillian Dale, and stated that all of them were secure enough for U.S. government non-classified data. In June 2003, the U.S. government announced that EASE could be used to protect classified information. FIPS Pub 197, Advanced Encryption Standard ISO slash IEC 18033-3, Information Technology A Euro Security Techniques A Euro Encryption Algorithms A Euro Part 3, Block Ciphers. The design and strength of all key lengths of the EASE algorithm are sufficient to protect classified information up to the secret level. Top secret information will require use of either the 192 or 256 key lengths. The implementation of ease in products intended to protect national security systems and slash or information must be reviewed and certified by NSA prior to their acquisition and use. Ease has 10 rounds for 128-bit keys, 12 rounds for 192-bit keys, and 14 rounds for 256-bit keys. 10 cycles of repetition for 128-bit keys, 12 cycles of repetition for 192-bit keys, 14 cycles of repetition for 256-bit keys. By 2006, the best known attacks were on 7 rounds for 128-bit keys, 8 rounds for 192-bit keys, and 9 rounds for 256-bit keys. Side Channel Attacks NIST slash CSEC Validation Test Vectors Performance For cryptographers, a cryptographic break is anything faster than a brute force attack a euro i.e., performing one trial decryption for each possible key in sequence. A break can thus include results that are infeasible with current technology. Despite being impractical, 
theoretical breaks can sometimes provide insight into vulnerability patterns. The largest successful publicly known brute force attack against a widely implemented block cipher encryption algorithm was against a 64-bit RC5 key by Distributed.net in 2006. The key space increases by a factor of 2 for each additional bit of key length, and if every possible value of the key is equiprobable, this translates into a doubling of the average brute force key search time. This implies that the effort of a brute force search increases exponentially with key length. Key length in itself does not imply security against attacks, since there are ciphers with very long keys that have been found to be vulnerable. Ease has a fairly simple algebraic framework. In 2002, a theoretical attack, named the XSL attack, was announced by Nicolas Courtois and Joseph Piperzik, purporting to show a weakness in the EASE algorithm, partially due to the low complexity of its nonlinear components. Since then, other papers have shown that the attack, as originally presented, is unworkable, see XSL attack on block ciphers. During the EASE selection process, developers of competing algorithms wrote of Dale's algorithm, we are concerned about use, in security-critical applications. In October 2000, however, at the end of the ease selection process, Bruce Schneier, a developer of the competing algorithm Tufish, wrote that while he thought successful academic attacks on Dale would be developed someday, he did not believe that anyone will ever discover an attack that will allow someone to read Dale traffic. In 2009, a new related key attack was discovered that exploits the simplicity of EASA's key schedule and has a complexity of 2119. In December 2009 it was improved to 299.5. This is a follow-up to an attack discovered earlier in 2009 by Alex Biryakov, Dmitry Kovratovich, and Ivak Nikolia, with a complexity of 296 for one out of every 235 keys. However, related key attacks are not of concern in any properly designed cryptographic protocol as a properly designed protocol will take care not to allow related keys essentially by constraining an attacker's means of selecting keys for relatedness. Another attack was blogged by Bruce Schneier on July 30, 2009, and released as a preprint on August 3, 2009. This new attack, by Alex Biryakov, or Dunk Elman, Nathan Keller, Dmitry Kovratovich, and A.D.I. Shamir, is against EASE 256 that uses only two related keys and 239 time to recover the complete 256-bit key of a 9-round version, or 245 time for a 10-round version with a stronger type of related sub-key attack, or 270 time for an 11-round version. 256-bit EASE uses 14 rounds, so these attacks aren't effective against full EASE. The practicality of these attacks with stronger related keys has been criticized, for instance, by the paper on chosen key relations in the middle attacks on EASE 128 authored by Vincent Ridgman in 2010. Implementations In November 2009, the first known key distinguishing attack against a reduced 8-round version of EASE 128 was released as a preprint. This known key distinguishing attack is an improvement of the rebound, or the start from the middle attack, against EASE-like permutations, which view two consecutive rounds of permutation as the application of a so-called supers box. It works on the 8-round version of EASE 128 with a time complexity of 248, and a memory complexity of 232. 128-bit ease uses 10 rounds, 
so this attack isn't effective against full ease 128. The first key recovery attacks on full ease were due to Andriy Bogdanov, Dmitry Kovratovich, and Christian Rechberger, and were published in 2011. The attack is a biclique attack and is faster than brute force by a factor of about 4. It requires two 126.2 operations to recover an EZ-128 key. For EZ-192 and EZ-256, 290.2 and 2 254.6 operations are needed, respectively. This result has been further improved to 2 126.0 for EZ-128, 2 189.9 for EZ-192 and 2 254.3 for EZ-256, which are the current best results in key recovery attack against EZ. This is a very small gain as a 126-bit key would still take billions of years to brute force on current and foreseeable hardware. Also, the authors calculate the best attack using their technique on ease with a 128-bit key requires storing 288 bits of data which is 9 petabytes. That works out to about 38 trillion terabytes of data which is more than all the data stored on all the computers on the planet in 2016. As such this is a seriously impractical attack which has no practical implication on ease security. Notes According to the Snowden documents, the NSA is doing research on whether a cryptographic attack based on Tau statistic may help to break ease. At present, there is no known practical attack that would allow someone without knowledge of the key to read data encrypted by ease when correctly implemented. Side channel attacks do not attack the cipher as a black box, and thus are not related to cipher security as defined in the classical context, but are important in practice. They attack implementations of the cipher on hardware or software systems that inadvertently leak data. There are several such known attacks on various implementations of ease. In April 2005, DJ Bernstein announced a cache timing attack that he used to break a custom server that used OpenSSLSE's encryption. The attack required over 200 million chosen plaintexts. The custom server was designed to give out as much timing information as possible, however, as Bernstein pointed out, reducing the precision of the server's timestamps, or eliminating them from the server's responses, does not stop the attack, the client simply uses round-trip timings based on its local clock and compensates for the increased noise by averaging over a larger number of samples. In October 2005, Dag Arni Osvik, A.D.I. Shamir, and Aaron Tremor presented a paper demonstrating several cache timing attacks against Ease. One attack was able to obtain an entire Ease key after only 800 operations triggering encryptions, in a total of 65 milliseconds. This attack requires the attacker to be able to run programs on the same system or platform that is performing ease. In December 2009 an attack on some hardware implementations was published that used differential fault analysis and allows recovery of a key with a complexity of 232. In November 2010 Endra Bangerter, David Gulash, and Stefan Kren published a paper which described a practical approach to a near real-time recovery of secret keys from ES-128 without the need for either ciphertext or plaintext. The approach also works on ES-128 implementations that use compression tables, such as OpenSSL. Like some earlier attacks this one requires the ability to run unprivileged code on the system performing the ease encryption, which may be achieved by malware infection far more easily than commandeering the root account.
In March 2016, Ashok Kumar C., Ravi Prakash Giri and Bernard Menezes presented a very efficient side channel attack on Ease that can recover the complete 128 bit Ease key in just 6 A Euro 7 blocks of plaintext slash ciphertext, which is a substantial improvement over previous works that require between 100 and a million encryptions. The proposed attack requires standard user privilege as previous attacks and key retrieval algorithms run under a minute. Many modern CPUs have built-in hardware instructions for ease, which would protect against timing-related side-channel attacks. The cryptographic module validation program is operated jointly by the United States government's National Institute of Standards and Technology Computer Security Division and the Communications Security Establishment of the Government of Canada. The use of cryptographic modules validated to NIST FIPS 140-2 is required by the United States government for encryption of all data that has a classification of sensitive but unclassified or above. From NSTISP No. 11, National Policy Governing the Acquisition of Information Assurance, Encryption products for protecting classified information will be certified by NSA and encryption products intended for protecting sensitive information will be certified in accordance with NIST FIPS 140-2. The Government of Canada also recommends the use of FIPS 140 validated cryptographic modules in unclassified applications of its departments. Although NIST Publication 197 is the unique document that covers the EASE algorithm, Vendors typically approach the CMVP under FIPS 140 and ask to have several algorithms validated at the same time. Therefore, it is rare to find cryptographic modules that are uniquely FIPS 197 validated and NIST itself does not generally take the time to list FIPS 197 validated modules separately on its public website. Instead, FIPS 197 validation is typically just listed as an FIPS approved, ease notation in the current list of FIPS 140 validated cryptographic modules. The cryptographic algorithm validation program allows for independent validation of the correct implementation of the ease algorithm at a reasonable cost. Successful validation results in being listed on the NIST validations page. This testing is a prerequisite for the FIPS 140-2 module validation described below. However, successful CAVP validation in no way implies that the cryptographic module implementing the algorithm is secure. A cryptographic module lacking FIPS 142 validation or specific approval by the NSA is not deemed secure by the U.S. government and cannot be used to protect government data. FIPS 142 validation is challenging to achieve both technically and fiscally. There is a standardized battery of tests as well as an element of source code review that must be passed over a period of a few weeks. The cost to perform these tests through an approved laboratory can be significant and does not include the time it takes to write, test, document and prepare a module for validation. After validation, modules must be resubmitted and re-evaluated if they are changed in any way. This can vary from simple paperwork updates if the security functionality did not change to a more substantial set of retesting if the security functionality was impacted by the change. Test vectors are a set of known ciphers for a given input and key. NIST distributes the reference of ease test vectors as ease known answer test vectors. High speed and low RAM requirements were criteria of the EASE selection process. As the chosen algorithm, EASE performed well on a wide variety of hardware, from 8-bit smart cards to high-performance computers. On a Pentium Pro, 
Ease encryption requires 18 clock cycles per byte, equivalent to a throughput of about 11 MB S for a 200 MHz processor. On a 1.7 GHz Pentium M throughput is about 60 MB S. On Intel Core i3 slash i5 slash i7 and AMD APU and FX CPUs supporting Ease NI instruction set extensions, throughput can be over 700 MB slash S.